in my defense, my big fuzzy sweater got packed. So, I had a couple of thoughts. We just got some news today. I got some news today that I'm going to have to assess and I don't want to talk about, so I'm going to avoid it. Can you see how this is red? I just got out of the shower. I just washed. Can you see how this is all red and looks kind of hivey? I don't know if I can get closer, but... Okay. So, from the time I was a little kid until about 10 years ago when I actually talked to a doctor who knew what they were talking about, I have been told I didn't bathe enough. That Because it turns brown and it looks like dirt. Okay, I didn't bathe enough. I don't have good cleanliness habits. It gets you to the point where you quit bathing because it's not going to make a difference. I have them up here occasionally. Okay. Have you ever seen a diabetic and they get the skin patches here? Let me rephrase that. Have you ever seen a minority diabetic, a POC diabetic, and they get the skin toning up here and it looks like just scales? It's the same thing here. It's a specific genetic ish that certain brown people get. Not every brown people. It's not actually transferred within family lines. It's just a thing. And what it is, is that the carotenoids in the skin, when exposed to sweating and sunlight, or UV light, turn brown. It's just the skin. It's not the melanin. It's not a suntan. That's why it looks like dirt, because it's the wrong part of the skin turning color. On top of that, it happens in people who, sorry, I got something in my eye, who shed a lot. I... I have a huge amount of dead skin cells. I can roll up dead skin cells, take a bath the next day, roll up dead skin cells, take a bath the next day, roll up dead skin cells, take a bath the fourth day, and my skin splits because I've taken all the skin off. Okay, that's one of the reasons I have the diagnosis for EDS, Ehlers-Danlos, because Ehlers-Danlos is a connective tissue disorder. Most people have hypermobility, but some people have skin problems. Anyway, this, where, can you see how it's actually starting to fade as we're talking? But it will always be a shade off, okay? So, the reason that the skin routines that they, they sell to people include toner, which is just rubbing alcohol, that's all it is. The reason they include toner on a cotton ball is because toner or acetone, rubbing alcohol, witch hazel, vodka, these are the only things that will pull that keratinized skin up, okay? So you, you can have brown dirt ring look and hit it with soap and water all you want. Hit it with soap and water all you want. It ain't going anywhere. It doesn't move. You have to use rubbing alcohol. And a cotton ball with rubbing alcohol, toner, go like this, and the t cotton ball's brown. I should have brought the wash rag in with me. Cotton ball's brown. And people go, ooh, you're dirty. No, it's the skin cells are brown. Okay, you have the same number of skin cells coming off, but your skin cells are translucent, and mine are not translucent. They look dirty in these areas. Anyway, 10 years ago, at the start of menopause, hit a doctor who went, oh, well, that's what that is. Didn't your mother or your grandmother tell you about it? No, no, they didn't. The way to tell the difference between the carotenoid issue, especially with small children where they have the dirt rings and they swear they're scrubbing and they have dirt rings and their, their elbow pits are dirty, and, you know, places where you sweat get dirty. Take Noxzema. Put the Noxzema down. Give it a minute or two and scrape. If it's dirt, it comes up. If it's this stuff, nothing comes up. Just clean Noxzema. Okay, because Noxzema is oil. Then get your cotton ball full of toner and go like this. And if it comes up, it's the carotenoids in the skin. It's an actual thing. It's not dirty. Okay, so that's my rant on that. Somebody made a comment the other day about the period of time I didn't talk to my family. There were a couple of long periods of time. But I was reminded via that conversation and via something that came up today of the breaking point for me at one point in the past. My sister was coming up from Arizona. I was working full-time at 7-Eleven as a deli manager and a loss prevention agent. 
my job was to go into 7-Elevens pretending to be the deli person and catch people stealing because the deli people, 7-Elevens used to have delis, that, not that many of them do anymore, they just have the hot case. But they used to have delis with sandwiches and employees could not resist taking home the entire thing of pot roast or ham. So that was my job for a couple of years. It was a good job, it paid well, it was a corporate gig. So my sister was coming up from Arizona and my grandmother called and she's like, you need to come because Bev's having a thing and you need to come. And I'm like, it's really hard for me to get the day off. Well, you need to come. Well, I don't drive, it's in Issaquah, I'm in Tacoma. You need to come, Jim will pick you up. Okay, fine. I have to be home by nine o'clock because I have work the next day. Yes, whatever, you need to come. And just, she would talk right over you. It didn't matter what you wanted. Loved her dearly at the time. Have some deep-seated issues now, but that's a different story. So, I love my Uncle Jim. I really honestly did. He was one of the shining lights in a very abusive childhood. He was also severely bipolar. Um, PTSD vet who did not get the care and treatment that he really needed. He got care and treatment, just not what he needed. Anyway, he pulls up to pick us up an hour and a half late. So I've been sitting with a cranky, I think David was almost three, three and a half year old. Just cranky as I'll get out. Cause you know, mom won't let him play cause she doesn't want him to get dirty. And he pulls up in his pickup truck with his two kids. And I had the absolute oh shit moment because he smokes, smoked, and he didn't use an ashtray inside the car, the truck. It was filthy, filthy. And I just, shit. And he's like, mom says you have to come. And I'm like, yeah, David's kind of sick because he was a little whiny. David's kind of sick. I'm thinking it'd be better. No, no, mom said don't take any excuses. You have to come. So we get in the truck and there's no seat belts. Not for adults, not for kids. He cut them out for some reason because bipolar. And he reaches and puts David behind the bucket seat, the, the bench seat in the area where there should be a seat, but it's just full of trash with one of the other kids. There's not even a seat. I mean, they're, they're shifting soda cans. David's three years old. He's sinking into, and I'm like, I can ride on my lap. And we go from Tacoma to Issaquah via Enumclaw. If you know anything about, okay, Tacoma, Bellevue, Issaquah. Tacoma, Enumclaw, Bellevue, Issaquah. Okay? So instead of being about an hour and a half drive, it took about three and a half hours. It was about 100 degrees out that day. We were already an hour and a half late for him picking me up. He had to stop by somebody's house in Enumclaw probably to get some marijuana. Probably. And about 20 minutes before getting to the house, Bev lived in a beautiful split level exclusive house in Issaquah. About 20 minutes before getting there, he pulls into a Dairy Queen without saying anything in advance. David's not supposed to have milk. Now, as an adult, he has milk because he's stubborn, I guess, or he doesn't mind irritable bowel and, and yeah, as a child, I knew for a fact that one small ice cream cone equals diarrhea and a fever within an hour and we're going to a family get together. And he, I'm like, David can't have milk. And he's like, well, you guys can sit in the car. It's a hundred degrees out. The windows don't work. There's no air conditioning. Fine, we're going in. Yeah, he bought David a blizzard. I took David into the bathroom and spent about 15 minutes trying to clean him up because he had a shellac of gray grit. And his brand new t-shirt he was so proud of was brown with just grunge and sticky spots. And he's always been a fastidious child. And I kind of blame myself at this point because I should have known my family well enough to pack three extra outfits. You know? So we get back in the car. Kids are eating their ice cream. He's got, Jim's got his soda. We get to Bev's place. 
We get out of the car. I'm again trying to hit David with a washcloth or a wet paper towel. Trying to think of what the hell I can do because I ain't going to strip him naked right in front of the house and put the, the change of clothes on him that I have in my bag. So I had one change of clothes. Uh, I'm not going to do that in front of the house. It's like, okay, I need to get him into the house, get him to the bathroom, get him changed, then he'll be fine. Looking down at myself, realizing I'm just as dirty and I don't have a change of clothes. And through an open window, I hear my grandmother's voice. Doesn't she ever bathe him? And the entire walk of shame up to the doorway, I can hear the older women in my family discussing what a lousy mother I am, what a lousy person I am, how I've always been filthy, how I've never cared about being clean. You get the idea. I got inside. I, where's the bathroom? I go into the bathroom. Never mind I'd gone to college already. Never mind anything. Okay? Never mind. They're talking about how for six months I was on welfare and, and just all this shit that has nothing to do with my life now at that point. Has nothing to do with putting me in a car with a chain smoker who doesn't use an ashtray and has never cleaned that car. Has nothing to do with the reality of the situation. And we get into the bathroom and David's crying and I know his gut hurts. Okay, And he's three years old. And I'm cleaning him up, and I pull out the change of clothes, and he looks at me and goes, It won't make a difference. They already saw. I'm like, I know, honey, but it makes a difference to us because we know. He changes his clothes. He has diarrhea. He has gut pains. We're in the bathroom for probably an hour. And my sister comes in, and she's like, Are you going to stay in here forever? I was like, I could hear everything that was said walking up. Why should I go out? She goes, oh, turns around and walks away. End of conversation. Nobody else came to talk to me. When David finally quit having gut bombs from the lacto lactic acid reaction to the, the milk, and I've cleaned him up, and he looks feverish, and he looks sick, because he's in pain, and he hurts, and, and there was enough nicotine in that car that we both had nicotine poisoning. I could feel it. And we go to go outside, and one of the other people says, Hey, hey, go get... G I can't remember what the kid's name is. Anyway, the cousin. Don't play with him. I think he's contagious. So David and I sat at a picnic table. By ourselves, for the most part. Said hi to a couple of people. Then everybody decided they were going to some Mexican chicken California type restaurant. And it's like 7 o'clock at night. And I'm like, Jim, we really got to get home. I got work tomorrow. And one of my relatives, I'm not going to name, went, oh, really? Kind of thing. And we wind up at the restaurant. And David's sick. And somebody's handing him a piece of cheese. And I'm like, he can't do dairy. He's three years old. He takes the piece of cheese. They're like, oh, fine. And my grandma goes, I see you still have that skin condition. Have you tried soap? Just like that. In front of everybody. And I'm like... Yeah, yeah, I have. And I turned. We finished up. If I'd had a single person to call at that minute, I'd have walked out. But I didn't. And I was in Issaquah. And it was payphone days. And it wasn't an option. We left the restaurant at 9.30. We got home at 12.35 a.m. And I started work at 2 a.m. With no sleep on the day. And I did not speak to family for two years after that. That's one of the times I quit talking to my family. There are a lot more. Anyway, I do love some of my family. I really do. That's going to fall if I'm not careful. But... <sighs> ignorance is ignorance. And cruelty is cruelty. And bullying is bullying. And silence equals death. And I ain't putting up with it anymore. It's as simple as that. Love everybody else. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.